Hey folks, Mr. Dell here. Um, I'm looking at uh, solving equations. Some have two variables and some have just a single variable. So we're going to solve the equation for the indicated variable. This is a problem I'm pulling from uh, CPM course three, and this is section 7.1.1. So specifically number seven dash nine. So it says solve each equation below for the indicated variable. So in this case, here's my equation, right? So I like to put my equation wall. So I know I'm dealing with my two sides and doing things accordingly. And it wants me to solve for Y. That ultimately means at the very end, I want my Y all by itself, right? So if I look, where is my Y? I have four X minus two plus Y. There's a Y here equals six minus two X. There's no Y on this side. So we're really looking to just get that Y all by itself, right? So I'm looking for that Y all by itself. So that means do some opposite inverse operations, create zeros, however you want to look at it, create some zeros to make sure that that Y is alone. So the first zero I'm going to create is this four X. So I'm going to create it by subtracting four X, four X, negative four X, is a zero. So I'm going to make it go away from this side, right? But to do that legally, you also have to do it to the other side of the equation. That's why I build this wall, because what's on does on one side, you do the other. So I'll put a minus 4x there as well, a negative 4x. So now I've got negative 2 plus y is what's left over here, because that minus 2 becomes now a negative 2, is equal to, and this, I have a negative, don't forget the sign in front's important, that minus 2x really looks at it as a negative 2x, a negative 4x. So I currently have six minus six X or six plus negative six X. So then got to get rid of the negative two by doing the opposite, which is positive two, right? That makes that a zero. Now I've got my Y alone. So I just got to do the math on this side and it's a constant. So I'm going to add it to the constant. So it's a six plus two. So this whole thing becomes a Y, excuse me, Y equals eight minus six X. So I've got my Y alone, solve for Y, good to go. B, this one says solve for X. So once again, I'm going to look at my equation. What do I have? I have a 4X minus 2Y plus Y equals 6 minus 2X. Oh, it's the same equation, but now I just got to get my X's alone. So in this case, I have X's on both sides of the equation. So I'm going to, uh, in this case, uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and um, get my, I, I like to, in this case, I'm going to keep my X's over here. I want my X to be on this side. So what do I need to do? Well, first of all, if I want my X's over here, I need to eliminate everything but the X's. Plus, I also need to get rid of the X off of this side so, it, so they're only on that side. So we can do a few things. So there's a, there's a few ways of going about this. I'm going to go ahead the same, in the same boat here. I'm going to add 2 to make sure that that negative 2 goes away. And I'm also going to subtract Y to so make sure that Y goes away, right? So what I just do? I'm trying to get my X's isolated on this side. So I so added two and subtracted Y. So over here, I'm going to add two and subtract Y. So let's think about order, let's think about combining like terms. What can the two combine with? Oh, it can combine with the six. So it becomes an eight. I still have this minus two X. There's nothing combined with that because that Y is also then just a minus Y. So now I have four X equals eight minus two X minus Y. So that I, now I've got still X's on one on side. I need to get them all on this side. So I got to get rid of the X's over here. So I'm going to add 2X to this side to zero it out. And then it'll end up on this side. So we have 6X equals 8 minus Y. Last step is I want only one Y, right? I want one Y. So you divide by the coefficient, whatever the coefficient of that variable term that you have. That's what you do. The, the third step is always divide by the coefficient because I want that to become a one. But when I divide by six, I have to divide all of it by six, right? So I can, a couple of things, I can divide each one individually by six or I can divide the whole thing by six. Either way you write it, it's going to be a right answer. So I'm going to in this time look at it this way. So it's eight minus Y all divided by six. So that's what my X equals. Okay. Last one. I uh, this time solve for X. And if I look closely, that's all I see is just X's. So that's good. There's no other variables and all my X's are on this side. So I'm going to have to clean this up first. Remember, the first step is always distribute, then combine like terms. So this becomes 18 minus 3X when I distribute the 3. 
plus 2x, still that plus 2x in there. Now, combine like terms, negative, don't forget, that's a negative, negative 3x, positive 2x becomes a negative 1x. Okay, so now I have 18 minus x equals 15. Okay, so I'm going to subtract, I want to get all my, my x's alone. So I'm going to subtract 18 from both sides to make that 18 become a 0. So I have negative x is equal to negative 3, 15 minus 18. <clears throat> and if I have a negative x, I really want a positive x. So that just means divide by negative 1 or change the sign of both sides. <clears throat> so there you have it, x equals 3.